Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Alessandra with Hackster, and today we are excited to be hosting this webinar with MediaTek. Um, I'm happy to see so many people joining us from different time zones. Today, Ajit, who is a technical consultant at MediaTek, will be introducing the MediaTek Linkit Smart 7688 platform. Um, a couple of housekeeping items. We will be recording this webinar and posting the link, uh, so you'll be able to review everything afterwards. And if you have a question during the webinar, you can type it into the chat box, and we'll answer it after the presentation is over. If we don't get a chance to answer your questions, you can always email us at help at hackster.io. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to hand it over to Ajith. Thanks a lot, Alessandra. Um, welcome all. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. Uh, so welcome to the uh, webinar session on how to develop smart home and uh, office applications using MediaTek Linkit Smart Zone 68 platform. Uh, so my name is Ajith. I'm working as a technical consultant on MediaTek Labs, uh, especially concentrating on 768 platform. So next uh, 30 or 45 minutes, I'll be talking about uh, Linkage Smart 7688 platform. Uh, uh, so if you have any questions, I mean, you can just keep posting onto the uh, chat, and I will be uh, replying to that uh, at the end of the webinar session. Um, so uh, this, these are the topics which I am going to cover. Uh, what is MediaTek? Or who is MediaTek? What uh, what is MediaTek Labs inside MediaTek? Uh, Linkage Smart 7688 HDKs, uh, the features of HDKs, and what are the software tools you can use to develop applications on Linkage Smart 7688 platform. Um, peripheral programming on uh, how you can connect a sensor uh, or actuator with the board and then how you can control it or how you can read values from that. Uh, then uh, finally, we will go to the questions part of it. Um, so what is MediaTek Labs? Uh, it's basically a developer-centric ecosystem from MediaTek. Uh, so basically it's a global free program for the developers uh, to support developers from their uh, uh, support developers on a device creation, uh, application development, and various services we are offering. So uh, our portal is labs.mediatek.com where uh, you will be able to find plenty of information about uh, MediaTek Labs, what we are doing. Uh, that, that's a portal where you get the complete set from uh, SDKs, uh, tools, uh, documentation, uh, details about our various uh, IoT specific IoT uh, and wearable devices or SDKs. You'll get all the information from this portal. Uh, so what what we are basically doing is enabling developer and makers success. Uh, so uh, uh, guys, uh, it could be uh, startups or it could be companies or it could be students uh, who will be having some idea. Uh, so especially in the case of uh, promising IoT and wearable uh, field, you will be having some idea and uh, we will help you to create prototype using our various uh, HDKs or hardware development kits. And from there, we don't stop there. We help you to create an actual product or actual device with uh, design and proper form factor, which can be uh, put into market or uh, you can uh, make business out of it, right? Rather than just keeping a prototype with yourself. So what? Uh, what are the help we do or what are the activities which we do? Uh, so we we uh, create a lot of uh, developer ref, uh, resources. Uh, we uh, help developers to have a lot of inspiration by giving a lot of talks, webinars like this. Along with that, we have uh, coverage on IoT, uh, cloud, uh, big data, and other things as well, uh, specifically targeting IoT and wearable use cases. Uh, you will have access to hardware. Uh, we provide HDKs. Uh, you can get uh, information about our SDKs, SDKs for Arduino. Uh, basically, if you want to create a prototype for the hobbyist type of uh, users or the targeted audience. And if you are a professional developer, you have different uh, SDKs and tools to create your own applications. Um, other than that, we, we also provide technical support. We have forum, um, very active forum on various products where you can post your query and you'll be getting a response. And uh, we have a cloud management system also for creating prototype purpose, uh, especially when you are uh, when you want to create a, a 
prototype you need uh, at least in the case of IoT right so uh, IoT mobile and cloud so that that's just like a complete uh, uh, system uh, without cloud you will not be able to do much uh, uh, then uh, that's the reason why we are providing a, a prototype uh, creation cloud service called MediaTek Cloud Sandbox MCS uh, where you can connect with MCS you can post your data from a sensor say for example temperature or any other sensor you can get data on cloud if you want to do some processing on top of that you can do that as well uh, then um, the other features which uh, we give for uh, developers it's developer advice and matchmaking a uh, design production and go to market help so the moment you create a prototype and then next what you want to do is how I can make an actual device out of it right so but you will not be uh, knowing that how I can create an actual device uh, I'll not be knowing a design house in um, say China US or wherever it is or Europe uh, uh, we are providing a program or we have a program called partner connect where we help you to uh, uh, find you the right person or right company for design or uh, matchmaking or manufacturing unit as well so we have plenty of partners uh, trusted partners with us we will introduce you to those guys and then from there you can you can uh, proceed further to uh, make your uh, dream come true uh, so now let's let's talk about MediaTek linked portfolio uh, we have plenty of uh, um, SDKs or the development boards targeting IoT uh, uh, so uh, I just want to give an overview about our various products so one thing is link it one uh, it, it's uh, uh, similar to Arduino with all the connectivity uh, issues solved with Arduino so you, you need to have a, uh, a Wi-Fi module lying along with that you have to buy another uh, uh, Bluetooth module if you want to buy another GSM module uh, with normal Arduino right so link it one is a complete package where uh, you can use it for all your uh, prototyping purpose with uh, all these modules in built with that you don't have to buy a separate module uh, link it assist, assist is also similar to link it one where uh, it's a wearable form factor it has a touch display touch and uh, display uh, where uh, you can you can draw some uh, images or you can show some uh, details to the customer as well so mainly targeting the uh, wearable kind of uh, use cases so th this this supports uh, professional developers uh, you can use uh, C or uh, C programming language you can use Eclipse as an ID 7681 uh, it's, it's a Wi-Fi module so if your use case is just a Wi-Fi module you can target uh, you can use 76881 and the other one is 7681 which we are going to talk uh, in detail today uh, it's open source uh, Wi-Fi platform uh, it's based on uh, open WRT uh, you can use Python Node.js uh, or Arduino as uh, so programming options for creating your prototype uh, Moving on, uh, new one, uh, we have recently launched uh, new more products, it's uh, 7687, uh, it's another Wi-Fi module uh, which is running on free autos, uh, so if you're targeting some uh, uh, devices which you can make a smart home devices, you can use this 7687 as well. Uh, so link it basically link it it's a growing, uh, rapidly growing link it community, a uh, lot of projects are getting created from various developers around the world you will be able to get a lot of uh, linkage specific projects in Hackster uh, as well uh, you can just refer that whenever you have time um, so there are plenty of projects tutorials available online so let's talk more detail about Linkit Smart 7688. Um, so basically, this is an open source Wi-Fi platform uh, where we are uh, targeting to create a more connected world, uh, targeting especially home and office automation kind of use case. You can uh, create smart devices, connect with the internet, then um, process data if you want, or if you want to simply control all these devices, you can do that as well. Uh, so. SOC wise it's a 7688AN, MT7688AN, that's the name of the uh, SOC. It's highly integrated or compact SOC for IoT device with Wi-Fi connectivity. Um, so that's a Wi-Fi part of it. Um, so I'll go in detail about the Wi-Fi part as well in later slides. Um, so we have software development tools as I said it supports OpenWRT, Python and Node.js and Arduino plugin. So Arduino uh, uh, you can just use our uh, you can use Arduino ID to 
uh, start uh, writing program and you can just upload it to the uh, link it's Mars 68 duo and then it will work so there are two types of HDKs uh, one is 7688 the other one is called 7688 duo so duo supports uh, Arduino the other one doesn't uh, so 7688 uh, Linkit Smart 7688, it has uh, MPU 7688 and 7688 Duo has MPU plus MCU. So MC, MCU is from Atmel, it's at Mega 32U4, uh, that's a MCU which is part of uh, Duo. And we have firmware and bootloader for uh, both these HDKs. So basically it, it's, it's uh, manufactured by Seed Studio. So these are the two HDKs, um, 7688 and Duo. Duo is Arduino compatible, as I said. So both these um, boards are running on OpenWRT Linux. It's a uh, Chaos Kamer. So that's a version of uh, OpenWRT. Uh, there are multiple programming options. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, Python, Node.js, and Arduino, and C and C++ if you want to make a system level programming, you can use that as well. So potential applications what we are targeting is mainly home appliances, smart gadgets. Uh, if you look at uh, home appliances, you can control, say for example, um, AC, um, refrigerator, or uh, if you want to control, uh, if you want to make a smart plug, uh, some kind of drone, smart lightings, or uh, air, fresh, air freshener, or whatever it is, you can uh, think about any smart home applications, you can use that. Along with that, you can target the home surveillance uh, related use case as well. Um, you can uh, create a Wi-Fi uh, module as well out of uh, this. Uh, so basically, that's uh, you um, you want to make it as a station mode or access point mode. Uh, you can use that as well. Which uh, then you can send the data to the cloud, and then again it, you can connect with the mobile app also. So in detail, uh, link it smart seven six eight eight. Um, so you can see all the details on the screen. So uh, it's one twenty eight MB DDR two. Uh, there is a 32 MB of flash, which is more than enough for an IoT use case, I believe. Um, chip antenna, which is by default, um, it's there. So if you want to add uh, extra power uh, antenna, then you can probably add that as well. Uh, there is a micro SD card support. Uh, you can just insert micro SD card slot. So back side of the board, you have uh, you can insert this uh, SD card. Uh, USB host is another one which we are supporting. So if you want to connect another, uh, uh, say, web camera uh, using micro USB, uh, USB, you can just connect it, uh, targeting the uh, uh, surveillance or uh, IP camera kind of use case. If you want to target, you can use that as well. So there are two LEDs. Uh, you can see on the left top left LED power and Wi-Fi. So this will blink uh, accordingly. Um, then this is the uh, USB power. You can uh, power it from your laptop or your workstation directly, or it's a uh, five volt. Um, you can just supply the power uh, using this uh, micro USB connection. Um, there's a shield cover which you will be uh, seeing that as well. So compared with Linkit Smart 7688 um, and Duo, the on only difference is there's a MCU uh, microcontroller unit which is at Mega 32U4. Uh, otherwise, it remains the same thing. Uh, detailed programming or peripheral programming wise, there are some differences which I will talk about uh, those in um, I mean later part of this uh, webinar. So Duo and Linkit Smart 7688, uh, what you need to understand is uh, there is a MCU part of uh, Duo uh, which supports Arduino programming, right? Then um, just uh, let's go in detail about uh, Duo. So this is how it looks like. So probably uh, you'll be having one or you'll be getting it soon. Um, USB host, this is the place where you can connect uh, any other USB device which would be compatible with this uh, OpenWRT. Um, whether it could be uh, say webcam or any other surveillance camera you want to connect or if you want to um, connect a flash drive a micro USB using the cable you can connect that as well. Um, so this is the MCU, uh, USB power, uh, MCU USB port, uh, MPU reset button that you can see there on top right, uh, top left you can see. Uh, uh, there is a Wi-Fi reset button also uh, which will have come handy when you if you want to do a Wi-Fi reset. 
uh, then MCU reset button which will do the at mega 32 for reset uh, so MT768810 um, and the DDR2 which is uh, covering this shield uh, then there is a micro SD card slot you can just insert uh, any SD card there uh, if you want to store some data you can use that so there is set mega 32 u4 which is uh, residing next to the micro SD slot 32 MB flash also you can see there on the top right uh, bottom right sorry so going to the hardware spec MPU and MCU uh, it's uh, 7688 um, it's 580 megahertz MIPS uh, at mega 32 u4 is on my MCU uh, memory of 32 MB flash and RAM of 128 MB uh, DDR2 and there's an SD card support as well which you can uh, insert um, power is USB 5 volt uh, digital there are 24 pins you can use uh, analog there are 12 pins uh, so external interrupts 8 pins I square C support is there I square C uh, UART Wi-Fi and PWM Wi-Fi it's 802.11bgn um, so you can uh, probably make use of all these things. Uh, PWM if you want to connect any um, actuator or motor if, or if you want to control something, um, you can use these PWM pins. SBA there is one set master and slave. So there are uh, uh, some issues with the SPIs uh, where it doesn't support full duplex. It supports only half duplex. Uh, so you can refer the uh, non-limitations also on uh, our uh, portal on that. What are the uh, issues with the uh, SPI or other features? Um, so now let's go to the software development tools. Uh, what are the options for you? As I uh, already mentioned, Python, Node.js, C programming, Arduino. Arduino supports only in Duo. Uh, bottom, it's uh, running on OpenWRT, Kaos, Karma, OS. Uh, we have packaged a lot of uh, Python uh, packages along with that, or uh, OpenWRT packages also along with this. Uh, so you don't have to download or install it. Uh, by default, we have uh, packaged uh, so many packages along with the board. Uh, so just uh, having an overview on supported programming languages and the applications you can target. So mainly with C and C++, you have you can you have the option of system programming. Um, the option is host platform, either Linux or um, OSX. Uh, so mainly targeting the uh, system programming audience. Python and Node.js you can use in any of the host platforms like Windows, Linux or OSX. You can use any of these platform as a workstation. Uh, especially Python and Node.js you can create uh, your own applications on prototyping and IoT applications. right? So basically the board is having Python and Node.js support so you can just write one Python and Node.js program then copy to the board and then from the board console using PuTTY you can just run those applications. So OpenWRT as probably you must be knowing it's a Linux distribution targeting the embedded devices started long back in 2004. Uh, especially targeting the wireless router uh, kind of devices. You can modify this OS as well. So there is a bootloader associated with, there is a firmware associated with this as well. So if you want to uh, make your own version of firmware, you have the source code. So we have made it open source. You can just uh, take those open source and if you want to modify something, you can create the firmware as well. Uh, otherwise, if you have the option of creating applications on top of the existing firmware. So OpenWRT packages, these are the packages built in with the board. Uh, you have Dropbear, you have Curl, you have uh, UVC camera support, MJPEG streamer is packaged along with this one. You By using some command you can uh, just start a, connect one webcam with this with the board and then enter one command to start the camera, it will directly stream. Uh, whether if you want to make it local streaming uh, inside an intranet kind of use case uh, or if you want to send data to the cloud and then you want to watch it uh, I mean, online from anywhere in the world, you can do that as well. Uh, Python and Node.js, it's again prepackaged. You don't have to install specifically with this one. This supports everything together. Uh, Libra, UPM, these are the libraries for the sensors, uh, for uh, especially for Linkit Smart 7688. Uh, you can use those. Uh, bridge library, Ad Arduino Unbridge library, uh, that's also there with the Linkit Smart 7688 Duo. 
you can you can have a look at all the packages what are installed uh, in the board so now let's let's uh, talk about peripheral programming um, so um, there are uh, there, there is a difference of uh, uh, in the peripheral programming in linkage smart 7688 and duo uh, so i'll talk about that in detail in the coming slides uh, so this is linkage 76 smart 7688 hardware architecture uh, so if you look at this uh, MT7688, that's the core of this, and OpenWRT is running on this. Uh, sensors will be connected directly with MT7688, and USB device, right? So if you are uh, inserting a USB device or SD card, that will that can be directly accessed from OpenWRT. So the sensors which are connected, uh, also the USB device or the SD card which is uh, inserted can be directly accessed from Open WRT. So that means using Python and Node.js program, you can directly access sensors and the SD card or the memory directly in the case of 7688. And of course, Wi Fi is also directly connected with Open WRT. From Open WRT, you can directly access the internet. Now, how can you access sensors from Linkage Smart 7688? So, as I said, uh, so all these things, uh, the sensors are connected with Open WRT. Uh, so Python can access all these sensors, Python programs. Uh, how do you access a sensor from Python? It's using libraries. So basically UPM uh, or Libra libraries you can use uh, or you can access all these sensors. So UPM is a set of sensors, uh, sensor drivers written in Libra. So Libra is a C, C++ library with bindings to JS and Python or uh, IO interface in Linux. So if you're writing a program, uh, yeah, in Python or Node.js, uh, you can make use of all this library, uh, UPM and Libra, Libra library, and then uh, start creating your apps. So you'll be able to get the UPM uh, or Libra examples from the link, which I you can see there from the my slide. Uh, there are plenty of uh, GitHub, uh, which, uh, uh, which are created by many developers using all these uh, libraries. So as I said, uh, there is a difference between Duo and uh, 7688 with the sensors. So in the case of Duo, uh, sensors are connected with Atmega 32U4. Um, so basically, uh, Arduino part of it, right? And MT7688 uh, connected with Wi-Fi and OpenWRT. OpenWRT can directly access SD card and USB, but OpenWRT cannot access directly the sensors. Reason being, Sensors are connected with Atmega 32U4 or Arduino. So, how you can use uh, the sensor or how you can access all the sensors in the case of Duo? Uh, there are three options. Uh, if you want to uh, communicate between these two, basically you open WRT and then uh, um, Arduino. There is a internally there is a UART channel where uh, you can communicate between these two. So, for example, if a sensor is connected with uh, Duo. Arduino can read that data and then send to open uh, MT7688 using the internal UART channel. And then from there, if you want to send data to uh, cloud or internet, you can use that. Okay, so I will talk about those uh, three options in detail uh, in the next slides. So three programming models uh, for uh, peripheral programming, primitive UART connection, uh, Fermata protocol, and Arduino Unbridge library. All right. So let's 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 see how it works in the primitive UART connection. So uh, as I said, all the sensors are connected with Arduino. So you can see there uh, below Arduino part of it. Uh, top you can see Open WRT module, right? So you can read uh, sensors, uh, all the values, or if you want to control any motor or something, you can do that from an Arduino program. And then internally uh, using the UART library from a Python or Node.js, you can communicate between these two, right? So what does that mean that you have to run one uh, Python program uh, and Arduino program? Uh, you can just uh, upload it to the MCU, uh, Arduino sketch, and then you can run uh, Python from the, uh, say, PuTTY, or from basically from the device console. Um, Another option is using Fermata. So Fermata, there is a protocol basically. Uh, there is a Fermata sketch as well at, uh, available in Arduino. Where you can run Arduino Fermata protocol or uh, examples uh, in the Arduino. 
and run, then run the same um, Python uh, examples which uses uh, formatter you can run in the uh, OpenWRD site and then you can communicate between these two. So you can see this is this is how it works MCU and MPU communication on top you can see a network so which is uh, accessible only from the OpenWRT uh, MT7688 and peripheral devices you can see below the box which are which could be sensor or actuators which are connected with uh, Arduino at Mega 32U4. Uh, you can use for meta sketch which is uh, available in the Arduino IDE so if you have installed Arduino uh, probably you will be having all these examples ready so for meta sketch you can directly use that and run one python program on the console uh, device console and then internally it will talk uh, using the UART channel so you can see the dowttys 0 and then serial one so using formatter protocol over UART it can communicate between these two all right so if you want to uh, understand more about formatter you can see that so there are uh, mainly two uh, formatter protocols or uh, libraries available you can just uh, do the command pip install py formatter uh, example code is available at this uh, link github.com slash tino slash pui formatter and you can use the Arduino side you can use the standard for meta sketch and you another option is pi meta you can use um, that's also available from github uh, link and in the Arduino side you can use pi uh, so sorry uh, for meta plus sketch so the third option is using directly bridge library so don't worry about uh, python and not don't worry about node.js so if you want to do everything together in an Arduino sketch, you can use it using bridge library, right? So Arduino Un bridge library uh, will allow you to connect with the sensor, read the data directly using uh, Un bridge library. Uh, you can send data to the internet. So this is the third and simplest way of uh, accessing the sensors and then sending the data to the cloud. So you can use this as well. So bridge library, um, it, it supports uh, process console, file IO, HTTP client, mailbox, and you can use any of these features. All these are part of uh, Linkit Smart 7688 Duo. Uh, so all these examples are part of Arduino ID. So once you install that, you will get all these things by default. So you can you can refer any of this. So from Arduino, using Arduino bridge library, you can access file IO. Uh, if you want to read and write something onto the SD card, you can use do that uh, you can access uh, uh, all the sensors by default and uh, the important point is in this case of uh, bridge library or bridge examples you don't have to uh, use Python or Node.js to send data to the internet you can use bridge library itself to send data to the cloud as using HTTP client um, so that's about the peripheral programming in brief and uh, the uh, last part is on the cloud cloud side MediaTek Cloud Sandbox. Uh, it's called MCS. Uh, so basically, it's a REST APIs we are providing uh, how you can send data from your device to the cloud. Uh, the cloud endpoints will be having uh, channels. Uh, you can send different type of data, say for example, float, uh, GPS, video, pictures, and controllers. Uh, so when I say video and pictures, if you have connected a, a, a webcam with the 7688 board, and then if you want to capture an image and then send to the cloud you can do that using MCS uh, we have tutorial for that as well in detail for 7688 also if you want to uh, continuously stream video to the cloud you can do that as well along with 7688 and MCS cloud service so basically this is the uh, free uh, cloud service provided by MediaTek uh, to help uh, people to create prototypes using our uh, development boards uh, there will not be any charge you can use all these features of uh, MCS uh, but this is specifically for prototyping you cannot use it for commercial purpose so there are some uh, I mean third party uh, uh, cloud services you can use like AWS or uh, Windows Azure or IBM cloud or any other uh, cloud IoT related cloud service you can use for commercial purpose so there are plenty of uh, features like visualizing data where if you are keep on sending uh, data to the cloud say for example temperature you can see a uh, graphical representation 
um, if you want to update your firmware using over there update OTA you can use that as well um, also there are some rules you can apply on the back end say for example if if the temperature crosses a particular limit right say for example 30 or 35 you want to get notified on a mobile app or if you want to get a notification on your email uh, you can do that as well in the uh, MediaTek cloud sandbox so once you go to mcs.mediatek.com it, it's fairly simple just create your own account and then just go through uh, basic tutorials you will be able to get the details online so hardware um, duo there is a breakout board also available uh, you can buy that breakout board if you want and then you can connect uh, different sensors while creating your prototype All right so what's next uh, you can just go to labs.mediatech.com and uh, register yourselves with the details uh, you can access whole lot of uh, IoT specific uh, tutorials, SDK details, you can download all the SDKs, uh, you can see the forum, you can be part of uh, the forum as well. Uh, then um, you can um, see all the webinars uh, happened in the past as well. I mean there's a new webinar which is coming uh, on uh, 8th of November on developing IoT devices, creating wearables with uh, 2523. There's a new SHDK available which supports uh, Bluetooth plus uh, GPS. Uh, you can just uh, register for this one and then uh, watch it. Uh, um, I think it's by I think by mistake I put 8th November. I think it's on. I will show you that uh, uh, date uh, by mistake I put on 8th November. Um, questions we will uh, we will see uh, questions in in another five minutes or so uh, before that I just want to show you um, the device how you can connect with the device uh, so before going to the Q&A I will just show you um, the demo at least um, how you can access the board right and if you want more detail about uh, MediaTek Cloud Sandbox you can just have uh, labs.mediatek.com slash MCS you can just go there um, now let me just share my complete screen um, all right all right so uh, I have switched on my uh, Linkit Smart 7688 board. Uh, so how do you see that? Uh, probably you can just go to your uh, um, list of Wi-Fi routers available. Uh, so Alessandra, can you please confirm uh, my complete screen is visible to you? Alright, um, so you'll be able to see um, Linkage Smart 7688 1C06BF, uh, so there will be number or the MAC address associated with uh, each board. Uh, so you can just uh, select that and once you connect with that you'll be able to uh, access the board console. Alright, so this is the way you will be able to see a uh, board first uh, so this is acting as a access point uh, initially so the board by default it when you switch on the board it will be in access point mode right
IP address, the device name, um, account in information, software information like what's the version of bootloader and firmware. If you want to do a firmware update, you can do that. Um, you can download the firmware from labs.mediated dot com slash seven six eight eight and then you can just drag and drop here to update the firmware. It's as simple as that. Uh, so there are two modes supported by seven six eight eight, either access point or station mode. Uh, both at the same time it's not possible as of now. Uh, only either AP mode or station mode. So currently it's in access point mode you can see there AP mode. Uh, if you want to change to station mode uh, station mode means you can connect with an, another Wi-Fi router which is having internet so that uh, once you connect with that you will have internet on this device as well. So especially if you want to connect with the sensor and then send data to the cloud you need to make it in station mode by connecting with the Wi-Fi router. So how do you do that? You just go here and then select station mode uh, then it will list uh, all the Wi-Fi routers available in this area. You can see uh, multiple uh, Wi-Fi routers, you can connect with that and then you enter the password for the uh, Wi-Fi and then connect, it will go for a restart and then it will be connected with, uh, it will be in station mode and it will be connected with internet. Um, there is an open WRT detail page as well, if you want to log into that you can just go in detail so you will be able to see all these details so if you want to change uh, all these settings you can do that. Uh, you will be able to see all the kernel log or the services what are uh, running on the device. Uh, Real-time graph if you want to see you can see that. So basically this is an open WRT console for the admin. Uh, so you can you can uh, just log into that and then see or if you want to make some modification you can see. You can see that open WRT commerce covers commerce so that's a version of uh, the uh, open WRT running on this particular device. All right. So this is about the web view. Uh, you can access like this. And now, if you want to access or if you want to go to the console, how do you do that? Uh, so either you can use SSH or in the case of Windows, you can use Putty. So this is uh, Putty. I just started uh, Putty here. Uh, so you'll be able to um, log in. Uh, so it will ask for username. Um, and then just give the login uh, as root and then password. Uh, you will be able to see uh, the console page like this. So you can see open WRT here. So if you see, you can do LS, you can see all the programs, whatever it's there, right? So if you want to run, um, uh, if you want to run a, oops, Python, uh, you will be able to see, right? So you can run any. Uh, you are able to see the PYs, uh, Python programs, you are able to see um, JS program, not JS program as well. So if I want to just run one Python program, I can just type python stream.py, right? So it will start uh, uh, Python uh, stream program, whatever it's there, I just copied those uh, Python scripts sometime back. So what it does is it just uh, starts um, uh, Webcam I have connected with the board. Uh, it will just start streaming um, locally. So, how do you access that? Uh, probably, you can just go to my link it. My link it slash dot eighty eighty. So this is my screen basically. Uh, you'll be able to see that at least it's moving. Uh, this is my board. You can see here. Uh, it's blinking so I've connected a webcam with this and then I'm just streaming it so basically MJPEG streamer is installed with this board uh, by default so you can just execute those uh, Python script um, now uh, how do you copy uh, files to the board uh, there is one tool called SCP I'll just add that so this is called WinSCP uh, you can just select this, just give the name of your board and username and password. Uh, this will give you an explorer kind of uh, UI. It will connect with the board, right? And uh, you will be able to see all the files and you can open it as well. So if you want to copy some files from your PC left side, you can see 
this your PC window uh, left side you can see my um, local PC and right side this is the um, view of the board so basically the uh, file system which is there on the board so if you want to just open one particular uh, say server uh, motor Python program you can see that just double click it will open uh, the program so if you want to edit it you can edit it here as well and then save it so this makes um, I mean uh, easy for the developers you can just copy any file from your workstation directly drag and drop here uh, and then execute from your console um, to execute any program right um, that's about the console that's about how you can copy a particular file uh, or Python program to the board or Node.js or any other things. Um, now uh, let's let's see Arduino, uh, how it works with Arduino. Um, let me just connect uh, the Link It Smart 768 Duo with my uh, um, PC. So initially there won't be any uh, so you can just install any uh, Arduino latest version, say for example 1.6.9, 1.6 update, um, anything, whatever it's latest, you can um, install it. Um, so you need to go here and preferences and then set our board um, package. So basically it's a board manager URL you have to provide. After that, you have to go board manager and install our link. It's smart 768 duo. Uh, you can see the version 018 here installed. Uh, after that, you will be able to see their uh, board as link. It's Smart 7682. So once you install Arduino ID, then you have to follow these steps. So these are men mentioned in our getting started guide, right? Uh, you can just follow the video tutorial or the step-by-step -step guide, uh, which is part of our uh, tutorial in under link uh, labs.mediatech.com/768. So once you have uh, connected Linkit uh, Smart 768 Duo with your PC or workstation or laptop, you will be able to see the port which will be coming like this, COM19, or th th this depends on your uh, PC uh, or the port where you are connecting. So you just select this and make sure that you have selected board as Linkit Smart 768 Duo and port number correctly as whatever it's showing here under Duo. Then you will be able to upload the, um, you can write any sketch. Uh, this is one simple sketch I've written to update or upload some data to the cloud MCS and then uh, you can see that data, whichever it's, whatever it's coming from this board, it's uh, showing on there in the MCS cloud. Um, so you can see the serial monitor here, you can just open it. Uh, so this is a simple program which I have written. So you can see all the, uh, print of message whatever I have put it in this sketch will be showing here in the uh, serial monitor you'll be able to see all the details under serial monitor uh, this makes uh, easy for debugging and if you want to see um, what's going on or if you, if you are facing any problem you can print put some printouts and then see everything is fine or not all right um, then uh, you can see some print of sets coming here. So basically the program or the sketch, Arduino sketch, it's basically using bridge library uh, and then uh, connecting with uh, sensor. So I have connected a temperature sensor with this. Uh, so if you look at uh, the program, if you want to see in detail, uh, there's a function I've written to read from the temperature sensor. I get the temperature data and I'm just sending it to the cloud right so just me just let me go to my cloud service so this is MediaTek cloud sandbox uh, if you go to MediaTek mcs.mediatek.com you will be able to see the details uh, it's basically a portal where uh, you have tutorial you have step-by-step -step guide you have uh, you can create an account and then do a lot of things um, so if you go here, uh, latest tutorial 7688 implement with Linkit Smart 7688, you will be able to see uh, all the tutorials. You can just follow all the steps, whatever is mentioned under this. Okay. Uh, so there are uh, uh, five or six tutorials here. How you can send image from your 7688 uh, to cloud. How you can stream uh, data from our 7688 or the webcam which is connected with the 7688 Duo or um, uh, with MCS uh, online. 
and some how you can control the sun succeeded from cloud say for example if you want to connect with a light simple light or fan or something uh, how you can switch on and off from your uh, cloud service or from your mobile phone how you can do that so all this detailed tutorial you can find it online all right um, so I think um, I covered most of the things let's let's go back to my slide so that's the uh, end of slide set now let's let's go back to uh, uh, the chat window and say, then see uh, what are the queries we have. Uh, so Alessandra, can you please help me with that? 